afternoon there ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host Imperial Dane. We're off here to a one uh, versus one on Holotni Farama. And we shall be watching the United States of America here under Tristan fighting for the 5th Infantry Division here. Going up against the Krauts and uh, Porygon here fighting for Germany for the Reich and for the 2nd Panzer Division. Doctrines are armor, airborne and infantry here versus Special Operations Elite Armored. That's getting increasingly rare to see. And Lust of the Ground Force though admittedly even rare to actually see used. Going pretty good here with the Stream Pioneer towards the center. Looks like the truck's following him up be here. That Porygon's going to be playing a bit dirty. Full it's going to do following up. Got a cool mag amongst all of this. VH echelon troops there, rifling on the way. Pretty standard opening there from Tristan. There you go. He is going to play dirty. Here's Stream Pioneer with the truck. He's going to be doing some truck pushing there. Shifting around the infantry while the Stuart Pioneers then do damage. We've got more often in though, he's sort of shifting about there, being a bit difficult for the truck to deal with both of them at the same time. And trying to get off as many shots here on the Stuart Pioneers since they are the more direct threat. Kulvang Race, of course, Polygon will try to sort of move up to support here. There we go, separating the men again, causing them to sort of constantly shift around. More shots going off the truck, taking some down to the Stuart Pioneers. Trying to do as much as they can. That's well. Meanwhile, the Fox is seeking points. Now, if he's not going straight for the fuel, but actually for the munitions first. There you go. Got a second rifle squad arriving here, opening up the Sturm Pioneer. We have some troops moving up as well. Kubelwagen flying away. Right here, not doing got the rifle taking heavy casualties here to the Sturm Pioneer due to Porygon's shady play. Kubelwagen flying there on the rear echelon troops. We got another rifle squad down the way for Tristan. Rather than getting suppressed, and there goes the open here charging as the truck keeps shifting things around. Fire. 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 troops there flanking about, maybe take up what's in the building. Man secure the fuel point there, though of course he hasn't actually been able to connect it in the slightest. Third rifle squad there moving in for Tristan. Well, the rear shot is beginning to look a bit unfortunate up there in the building, but there you go, some shots going off there against the Sturm Pioneer, arriving and reinforcing, rebuilding. Actually taking back the fuel there, a bit risky there, considering how low on health they are, but they might also try to sort of draw away Porygon's forces to sort of away from the more healthy squad up north by sort of pressing the fuel, and also offering essentially the unit there as an easier sort of white, thus, well, in that case, you know, trying to tempt Porygon to focus that rather on the sort of more healthier unit there. So a bit of a clever play there from. Tristan maybe, a bit of baiting, but not the usual sort of baiting you might see. A good bait, nonetheless, that's lying there right between secure the point opening up, and then the Kubelwagen doing some nice damage there. From behind, come there, go in fact, forcing Polygon to ultimately pull it away. Sturm Pioneer is also being rushed off the field. So there we go, rather brutal sort of initial engagement there for Tristan, but he somehow managed to turn around, though at the same time, of course, Polygon for taking advantage of this sort of gain a lot of the map otherwise. Certainly not the kind of Orbital Command West play I can do, but again, it's largely what they seem to have fallen to as of late, which is rather unfortunate, of course, also rather dull. Got a mechanized unit going up, then showing he doesn't have to pull back the Sturm Pioneer to repair. Kuvang receiving the repairs, he's also beginning to take munitions for fuel there, increasing his fuel income. Helping Polygon sort of build towards vehicles or armor, if that is what he wants. A quick flak half tank, or maybe a Puma, who knows? Fox has been the rear, says the rear one troops. Could see some suppressive fire, but no, he's actually quickly pulling back down the face of the Fox on this, but at least he's gaining the fuel point there. Took him long enough. Question is, of course, what will Tristan up for next? He could go for Lieutenant, or he could try and save up here for a Captain. But he's still on Oh, we got a Kuvag in there, so maybe not, maybe not. And there go, closing in with the suppressed fire. And of course, one thing to note is suppressed units are a lot less accurate. So unless the target, for example, on say a Kubang, which is reasonably large, I mean, they're not going to be able to do much damage versus the infantry units. But there you go, closing up, there's the units here, Fox holding it in the church. Kubang could flank the rifle, actually causing a lot of units there for Tristan to be suppressed, which is something he, he might want to avoid. And we're noting here now, Porygon's actually going pretty heavy on the Fox Canadiers. Fourth squad on the way there already. Attempt to hit some reinforced steel barricade that's quickly shut down or dropped by Porygon. 
Chris of Slobby getting to Murat, gaining back some territory here, pushing away Porygon, that's good for him. Less so for Porygon, who's the managed to quite a decent advantage in the victory point so far. And there you go, Volify there, suppressing, in fact, pinning the Frost because allowing the Rifle Mode to close in there. And there you go, Porygon swiftly retreats in the face of this, as that's clearly not going his way. And of course, the question is what will Porygon go for next? I mean, he could go flat half to sort of further pressure the infantry that Tristan has on the field, now further take advantage of fuel initially. He could go for a Puma, sort of guard himself versus early vehicles. Or I suppose he could even just go straight for a Schwer Panzer at the quarters, try and rush for some Lux and Orbital done. I mean, those are definitely options there for Porygon. The question is really what options do we actually go for? But meanwhile, there's a lot of this happening here. I mean, nope, basically, he's just tying up Porygon's force while he's then moving up towards the north take away territory there's a nice spread out approach you're also seeing force and then south there so basically they're just there to draw fire occupy Porygon without necessarily doing a lot of damage and we're now looking at five false gun escorts here for Porygon that's a large amount of infantry there for him a bit rare to see that many false gun escorts here from an over commander West players that's definitely also something that actually stands out we of course have to see how this works out cool mind they're being hunted down by the rifleman Falcon squad here out in the open versus Rifle. In fact, here we see Tristan actually closing in on the Falcon tank to sort of maybe wipe out the already damaged unit. And there you go, Rifle suppressed. Falcon guys do make it out. Somewhat alive. No, he actually did not go for the captain. Pardon me, what do you expect of that? But no, he actually went for the platoon command. He actually also went for grenades. So that could work out pretty interesting. Could be sort of blow up some of the attacking force here from Porygon. Lay down smoke screens and other fun things. And noting here, Porygon's actually gone for special operations. I mean, to a certain extent, that can actually work well with all these forces, with all the infiltration grenade assaults. I mean, that will work quite well with them. It also opens up for radio silence, some infrared storm gears and other fun things. Of course, the question is, what will Porygon actually use of his doctrine? But he's definitely going to have a lot of firepower then with these false guys. I mean, this is definitely one place where having a lot of false guys will work for you because you can get off a ton of grenades under the right circumstances. So the question is, will Porygon, though, make use of here versus Tristan? Who's still yet to make a doctrinal choice? I mean, there are certainly options. He could go for infantry, get some light machine guns out already. That is very much one option. Airborne could always be another sort of classic choice there. Armour could also work, but might have less sort of need right now. Kuban constantly running back. The damage got an M20 heart scout card there on the way for Tristan. While Purgon's forces of the Wehrmacht move forward, securing the territory. Achtung! This is it. No mind so from Porygon, he might want to get a for some good spot would be here or there. Meanwhile, a large person here from Tristan to the centre. We got forces here with the Panzer Shakes, the Raketen and Panzer Guxa. A large amount of grenades is shattering the building. As if though it was made out of tooth sticks. And there we go, got the M20 Scout coming ahead. A variant on the M8, which basically had the turret removed. In fact, that was not uncommon to so basically make a reconnaissance variant out of a vehicle while basically removing the turret. In fact, the same happened with the Stuart tank, for example. Little fun fact there. But it's a very popular sort of vehicle with the Americans. I don't think the British used it nearly as much. They were more sort of fond of using their own armoured cars, which the British actually had several of. There you go, another grenade assault. Bombarding the tractor and the wooden cart. Quick grenade there from him, but might be able to hit Porygon's up to dodge it in time. And there we go. Blowing up instead some furniture. Take that, crap furniture. I don't think crap makes for that. Shut up, Larry. What are you, a crap? No. Ready for Troops have been forcing. We've got an ambulance on the way here for Tristan, who's still not using a doctrine. Polygon's forces move into large infantry assault mode, it would seem. For better black guys, got a spare pants at quarter up there. He could go for some orbital of and maybe then equip them with some Sturmgewehrs, which would certainly increase the firepower at certain lengths there versus the Americans. In particular, on a more close quarters map like this, the assault rifle upgrade for the Stur orbital of could work out quite well. Enforcing. Ambulance would certainly allow Tristan to sort of form a more forward command post here versus the Germans. But it's now sort of gaining good control of the map here. Porygon's tactics sadly do not allow him very well to hold ground now. He's sort of constantly rushing the Fulskers to and here and there. 
not quite getting anything on the shorts in the field, but more being aggressive. We've asked here about Tristan getting back for the early game. Shenanigans that Porygon's committed. M20 though, taking some nasty damage. Has been no sign of... Oh, no anti-tank mines there from it so far. I mean, that could also be a good move there. I mean, if Porygon is rushing for say, something like a Lux, I mean, a quick M20 mine there, the M6 anti-tank mine, could definitely knock it out of commission. Or for that matter, he's actually going for a Panther. If the Panther gets caught in that, I mean, that could be game over. Or at least... Scheiße, Dietrich! He's stuck in the middle of the road! This is bad! And go grenade assault. Quickly going to see if can't catch them. And looks like he might. Some damage they inflicted, but the grenade in return did almost as much, if not more, to the Germans who are a bit more bunched up. Striking south. And there we go. We got a Lux Aufklärungspanzer on the way for Portigon. Rob could take up the opening up in the Sturm Pioneer. Force gets hang here. Grenade assault could clear out that building. But it's sort of fun to see that it's never the pioneers had to get that kind of ability, despite the fact that pioneers were usually the one force in the German army had more grenades than anyone else. I mean, they really had a ton of grenades. They were really heavy assault troops. So, little fun fact there. We've got more reinforced steel barricades up there. Troops in a bit of trouble, and there you go. The Lux Aufklärungspanzer arriving here for Porygon. Interesting enough, it does seem like some people keep confusing it with a Panzer III. A Panzer III would actually be bigger than that. Just a quick note there. Just a quick note. And now we actually got a captain on the way for Tristan. He's still not sort of chosen any doctrine. He's still not chosen a doctrine. We've got here a kid out from Porygon. What did he do with any American light vehicles? And there you go, the lieutenant is from one hell of a nightmare there, caught in the middle of negative cover here with the compound canon on the looks. Tank through the lieutenant and friends there, leaving no survivors. And there you go, poor Gary went down. And it looks like he actually abandoned the M20 to get out the bazooka there, trying to get, do some damage there, but still a heavy loss there with the lieutenant wiped out. Thankfully for Tristan, it did not leave a PAR for Porygon to pick up, otherwise they could certainly get a bit more ugly. We got the M20 then moving ahead there, the crew. But ultimately pushed away, we got more folks because we need to sort of further solidify the position in, making it a bit more difficult just to attack head on, in particular with the Luke's covering up behind there, laying down vicious firepower. So that's definitely a bit of a problem there for Tristan. And now he's also losing the territory there in the north. Porygon making use of his larger force so that way, sort of trying to move around. But again, I mean, in a 1 1 engagement, he can easily end up in trouble for him. But of course, with the looks now, he does have a better chance sort of covering things up. Having the basically the force is sort of delay Tristan's infantry until the looks arrives and then tears the infantry to Pastrami. And of course, I mean, he could get us to a light tank, and that would certainly help a bit versus the infantry. Almost looks he could go for anti tank guns. A pack houses alternate option here for Tristan. Caps on the move here, and there we go, grenades going off. Did not do much there, though, the following rifle shots there from the Fultz gun, and he did it's a trick. Still trying for fuel there. Quick grenade. Oh, we might see Tristan losing it. There we go. Unit what there for. But at the same time, it also looks like. Porygon lost unit. In fact, those are the Sturm Pioneers. That's definitely a heavy loss than Riflemen. Definitely a heavy loss. We got Orbital Dyn arriving there for Porygon as well anytime soon. Orbital Dyn. Which you then could upgrade with the Infrared Sturm Gewehr. So add it. Army shooting business. And there we go. We got an M6 anti tank being laid down there on the road. The Germans, of course, do have something similar in the Regal anti tank mine, except it's actually cheaper, does less damage, but and can be laid down by a half tank. It's also doctrinal, but still, a little thing worth pointing out there. Uh, oh dear, the M20 charging ahead there. Got perhaps a bit overconfident from that anti tank mine, I don't know. I'll wait, got blown to bits. Tiny, tiny bits. And the rear slot troops have been told to drive it dead. 
while the vehicle crew moves on there, playing completely innocent with the bazooka. Replacement vehicle launch on the way. They go quickly beating haste retreat, realize they might not stand a chance on their own versus the Dukes. Captain holding up here, creating an anti-tank zone here, at least lighter anti-tank zone. I mean, a Panther or a King Tiger, I might not care as much about bazookas as, say, the Panzer II. Of course, a little note, their victory points are back in Porygon Santa versus Twiston, who's definitely struggling a bit here. But still, he's keeping up some good pressure here. He's keeping up some good pressure, he's keeping up a good fighting spirit. There you go, all something here. And there you go, Storm Gewehr soon available with the infrared sights, the Vampire. A rather late war addition here to the German armed forces. Don't know how effective they actually were in the war, though. Not because you speak, I've read so much about them. But they did exist. The Americans also, I think, made one infrared weapon with them. That was actually an infrared sniper rifle based on the M1 carbine, of all things. So, another little fun fact there. Bit of nasty action there. Right, need to maybe focus on the new swing. There we go. Moving into the Orbital of Darden with the Sturmgewehrs, but no. A bit too much there, maybe for Portagon, who then swings about from the other side. Needs to be careful, he doesn't get hit with a grenade. There we go, getting some kills there, slotting the Americans. But since he might consider getting out of there, he could actually pop down a smoke grenade. No, he didn't have the finish for it. And he's going to continue to fight covering support there. Falsk here fighting versus Rifeman up north. Rifeman definitely had the advantage there. Falsk has no veterancy. Rifeman veterancy too, and definitely a lot of cracks in their conscience. Veterancy too there for the Kubelwagen. Looks moving northwards. Looks like Polygon might either be aimed for a Panther or a Command Panther. It definitely def sort of depends on what he wants. Though a Command Panther on its own would probably be better, also cheaper, and they actually sort of benefit more from it. Oh dear, nothing to come here. The retreating rifleman that could very well. There we go. Be a slaughter here, which Polygon will definitely feast upon. Striking down numerous Americans there. This looks Aufklärungs Panther. We got the captain moving up there, trying to save his. Subordinates there, and there we go, a wall of bazookas, but ultimately not enough there. The looks pulls back like some monster in a horror movie, having consumed its victims right in front of the victim's friends. Ooh, fuel cash going up here, probably going to speed up to this armor. Airborne finally chosen, it's almost 20 minutes in. Also got the major up, so it could go, say, for an early, say, Scott, or a Sherman could also work quite nicely versus the larger entry force here from. Porygon, in fact, that would be his bit of his weakness. It would be, to a certain extent, a bit weak versus armor. And he's got the Ken, he's got Panther Strikes, but even then, they would put some pressure on him. And there you go, Paratroopers dropping down. Rather than the Force, got a grenade assault. Quickly dodge it. Force is moving in there. And we got chumps or something that's increasing close quarters combat again good on this map. And there you go, Luke's moving in, but taking hits there from the bazooka. Need to be careful, might even an anti tank rifle. There we go, he might lose it, he might lose it. And there you go, Luke's kaput. <laughs> Munitions cooked. And here we go, the rifle caught in an awful lot of bullets. There we go, grenade, they're almost rifling up the entire full squad there. Nice job there. You might see a grenade in return from the paratroopers over there. Quick cooked grenade and. Splendid stuff, closing in. Porygon's definitely something here to the antics of Tristan. The Petrus then suffer under the antics of the Kubelwagen. Orbison might move in to try and deal with them. There you go, suppressed paratroopers. Rather than moving. And now you actually see the Kubelwagen moving away from all of this. Orbison down there with four kills. Veterans, you want. Making very short work here of the VS launch. That could end up being a bit costly. But there we go, Patrick's moving in, need to stop up there. Don't, don't move into them, don't move into them, they got Thompsons. In particular, pop tax or sort that could be in. Oh no, no. Like, oh, the opposite done actually went down into the paratroopers. He should have stayed a bit at distance. Then he should have used the assault rifle advantage versus the submachine guns there. Plus, the paratroopers are more durable. It's right there. Bit of a poor engagement for Polygon in the end. There's a lot of bodies laying all over the place. That was the end of the elite Orbisoldan. But we do now have Panther here out for the Germans.
the Panther becoming increasingly the more common tank in the later stages of the war, actually by that point outnumbering the number of Panzer IVs available. So little fun fact there, the Panzer IV was still quite popular due to being sort of well, less maintenance heavy and also a bit more sort of suited towards infantry as well compared to the Panther. Pinto my machine gun on the way, Dev needs to sort of pressure the infantry. Schnell! Kill as many armies as he can. By the way, time here for the mid-game analysis, sort of looking already in damage. It's actually surprisingly close, there's also sort of not much of a distance here in terms of kills between the two. And you sort of look at army value, I mean, you do note here that the Porygon sort of had a nice lead overall. But at the same time, you know, it might not last forever. Though, of course, we'll have to see, of course, how it actually plays out. But still, you know, it's a bit fun there to note. And I really like this sort of now being available here. I can show you shot better stats during the match or during the mid game analysis, which, of course, allows for more interesting analysis. But again, you know, he's still got sort of the more valuable force in some ways. I mean, he's got more veterans, he's got the bigger armor. Tristan does not quite have that. In fact, he's very short on anti tank. So, in that regard, he's going to have a bit of trouble here dealing with the Panther. I mean, unless, say, Porygon charges straight into it, hits the anti tank mine, and then becomes an easy target for something else, you know, I mean. Porygon's got a pretty strong position, so in that regard, I mean, Tristan needs to get some anti-tank weapons up, anti-tank guns, Jacksons will be needed to sort of try and deal with that Panther, otherwise, I mean, he's going to be a lot of trouble if that Panther attacks, probably supported by the Volkskrans. In fact, he's always got Volkskrans left. In that regard, Porygon needs some more Orbital Darden, made some Sturm Pioneers, to sort of support it properly. Another set of Sturm Gewehrs and the Orbital Darden would definitely do him well. A bit of radio science might also help him hit a bit of a maneuvers there, keep maybe confuse Tristan a bit. I mean, it does seem like some players actually get confused when they can't rely on the min-map when you use radio silence, so I mean, that could be a possibility. For Tristan again, though, anti-tank pressing again, he's sort of trying to spread out Porygon again with the false kind of the only force at the moment with only Kubel Magnum and Panther support. I mean, actually sort of harassing him could actually work out quite nicely because it would be much more difficult for Porygon to overwhelm him locally without, saying, drawing away a large force, which then only opens up elsewhere on the maps, and that regard, I mean, that could work out quite nicely there for Tristan. But I'll actually play cleverly, and maybe if he can, you try and bait the Panther here into the anti-tank man. That would really be his best bet if he can't bait it somehow. I mean, if you catch it here, I mean, and that thing's going to be stuck, in which case it's going to be an easy target for anti-tank weapons. In fact, he's very close to being able to get into the P-47 rocket strike, so that could also work quite nicely. But here, back to the fight. Panther rolling force there, lots of machine guns firing, rockets going off. Oh, the explosion will be there, the Wilco crew with another bazooka there. Anti-tank rifle as well, damaging the engine. Oh dear. Porygon's Panther opening there did not quite work out there. Or Panther presentation, I know. Quite lacking the wet at the moment. So right there, Twist and Sword been able to sort of knock the Panther down to almost half health and damage its engine. He's definitely been able to deliver some good solid blows there. Versus Porygon, now we've got the Scott out, and that's definitely going to sort of put more pressure upon Porygon's infantry as well. There we go, I mean the M8 Scott is absolutely devastating versus infantry. And should not be taken lightly. It's definitely something that could punish a player for going a bit heavy on infantry if anything. Captain though still holding out surprisingly. Hit Kugelwagen was focused over the Panther. A bit unfortunate there for the Panther crew, which I imagine will like to get back in the fight as quickly as possible. Bit of suppressive volley fire again here, but this time grenades going in. Almost got the unit there. Close there for Porygon. Close, but not quite. And again, we have that small battle scene here. The equipment still laying on the ground, the men still quite dead. Plus, the looks there lying aside of wrecked Panzer IV. Porygon's forces are beginning to bleed out a bit more heavily now. Capture joining another grenade assault there, but the rifle quickly dodge it. More grenades being flung in the direction of the rifle. Almost get them, almost. Porygon might want to consider getting something to deal with the infantry. Maybe if he wants to sort of guard up here, I mean, a flat half check right about here. Could actually do him quite a bit cover here and would also cover here. So could actually work out reasonably. And there we go. And there we go. Porygon charging after the Scott. Hit the mine! I mean, you actually see M20 mines used so rarely at times, you know, you can actually forget about them. And now, 
with the Panther immobilized, the US Air Force is sent in to knock it out and put it out of its misery like a crippled animal. Which, well, this basically is at the moment. It's a Panther with stretch knocked off. 90 There are some pioneers, and of course, Poygon trying to get them, but it's too late. Porygon seems a bit upset about it. And there you go, the paratroops actually in a bit of trouble, then he actually forced to pull away. The pioneers finally arrived, but it's too late, too late. And the panther's just basically cooking there. Like a poorly maintained oven. Metro and defeat for the Kuma, that should help there with Porygon keeping a bit more alive since it's going to repair on its own then. That's not too bad. But of course the question is what will Porygon get next? Will he try to aim for a second Panther? Also looks like we got a battle group headquarters up. <coughs> a battle group headquarters up. I mean if he's feeling really desperate I suppose he could try and aim for a Yacht Panther 4 but I mean currently... I mean it's almost the same price. I mean you're better off getting a Panther. Aircraft crashing down from above, knocked out of the sky by German anti aircraft fire. And now Tristan does have a tank to destroy, but he doesn't have any tanks to destroy it with. I'll destroy it with it. And looks like that aircraft sort of survived a bit more. Actually, tried to knock out the Kugelwagen there. Oh, cool, Magnum almost down, he took it away. Ow, oh, and it went down. A lucky shot there from the rifle and set the engine on fire, killing everybody on board. Remember, kids, don't drink and fight the Americans at the same time. And there you go. A quick tax or assault here could have probably allowed him to wipe out that unit in one go, but nice, he did a lot of damage there, quickly forcing Porygon to pull back his Volksgrenadiere in the face of these elite assault troops available to the United States of America. This is what they're trained for. Second eight Scott there on the way, that's definitely going to the pressure Porygon's infantry. And we are seeing what is this. He's setting up a retreat point right there. An interesting use of the manpower available to him. He might be better off with an uh, support gun instead at in this point of field. Grenade is holding the captain. The captain there quickly dodges it, realizes what's coming his direction. And it's not candy. Fall back position upgrade ready. Target captured. No enemy contact. Of course, if he not bothered with the battle group headquarters, he could probably be getting a Panther right now, or closer in a minute or two. So that's a little fun note there. In which case, he might actually be able to sort of better pressure Tristan with less chance of maybe hitting another mine. Well, if I only attacking force, because we've got the grenade going off there, and they're close to. Our, oh no! Target neutralized. All very, very dead. No survivors there, and as of course they're German. Polygon though still sort of maintaining map control, but it's beginning to sort of slowly decrease. He's still got a victory point lead here versus Tristan. It looks like he's getting ready for another major push south, but at the same time, he's making a bit of a dangerous move. He's actually bunching up his troops much closely, which of course, in case say an M8 arrives again, you know, could turn them into motion. There go grenades as well. And there we go. Spreading up. There we go. Good, good. Then bunching up as they try to get all to the same point. M8 having a bit of trouble hitting the crowds. But there we go. Fritz and Jürgen blown to bits. Nice little fun position there with some reinforced steel barricade and sandbags together. Not bad, not bad, but not enough here. And you know, we're taking that in the face of the Scott here. Patrick coming up, might try and get it. No, misses. Scheiße, Fritz. Look where you're shooting at the Americans, not the trees. And unit wiped down the retreat by a grenade there. Well done, Betty Retreat for the paratrooper center falling as well here to the Major. Porygon though getting close to the second Panther, but again, had he not gone for that battle group headquarters, he probably could have had it up sooner. 
And we're seeing another full score score on the way. Interesting enough, you're just aiming for, say, Orbs or Dharma, which again would allow him to pressure the infantry of Tristan a bit more. Nurse might have a bit more benefits for him. Of course, that is merely my opinion. Shots going off. And he's laying down sandbags here. I wonder why that is. My best guess is basically trying to protect them from sort of direct shots or artillery by having the sandbags then sort of absorb additional shots. That's... Oh! Nasty there. I mean, the Scott is nasty. Very nasty. Apparently a bit too nasty there. Going oh, Fosca Squad number two down. The loss is suddenly piling up heavily here for Porygon. The Panther, though, is soon. Very soon. More artillery shots going off there. Those are not hitting, but Jenny, when the Scott hits, it hits hard. And there we go. No, he's actually trying to hit the Baked over here. Looks like Porygon's getting a bit desperate. There we go. Another Panther on the way. Another Panther inbound. Bit of smoke going down there, interesting enough. And he might just want to hit the retreat button right down the Baked otherwise, he's going to get knocked out in hand over to the Americans. Tristan, though, definitely enjoying some advantages here. Fifty caliber dropping in here. Interesting, interesting. I mean, considering you're just training, you know, I mean, it does seem a bit odd. He's actually calling it in from above. Put it mildly. Oh! Scheiße! You do have to be a bit careful around those craters. I mean, if it lands a direct hit, I mean, it's going to hurt a lot. Of course, then they'll just bunch up further. I mean, that's sort of the backside here. They do total tend to bunch up more. And while in most cover, it doesn't necessarily matter much. Again, it's in these small craters, though. Things get ugly. I mean, really ugly. If you're not careful, I mean, then you just sort of basically sort of get them really close together and they just make themselves an easier target. So that is something you have to sort of be mindful of when using cover. Do try to ensure to get some spread on them when you're fighting up versus artillery. Captain there, they're in some trouble with the Panther. Can Polygon turn this around with an additional Panzerkampfwagen 5? Will Deutschland prevail? Find out in a few moments. The other Panther waiting in the horizon. Like a dark memory. Of a regretful past. Can we get the Kidnapper again? Inch enough, he's, he's, he's leading with the Kidnapper. He's not exactly the sort of unit leading the assault with. Oh, Jackson missed the Panther! Did you want to find a cloak getting wiped happy by the Rifleman? No pins and machine gun here for the Panther, by the way, which could have helped the version of the infantry a bit. It does really benefit from having a pink pintle my machine gun up sort of deal with infantry. And he stole the Kedmare for Tristan, that cheeky fellow. Mission accomplished. And there we go, rolling ahead for Germany. Straight into the Jackson. A Ken Murphy setting up. He gets caught right in front of it. Shot went through there. Oh dear. What the Gardener there is one shot bull pudding. Looks like another unit was wiped out there by the Scott. And Porygon might be losing it a bit. And that, by the way, was a new sense of all. Exche word exchange system in progress. They're replacing some nasty words with less nasty words. Unless someone has a severe issue with pudding, which might require though a talk with a therapist. Still leading in victory point and falling behind in well practically everything else. Gardening lacquer. 
And there we go. It looks like he pulled out of this fight. The second Panzer Division retreats, having suffered extensive casualties in the fight versus the 5th Infantry Division. The assault has failed. The particular anti-tank man here seems to sort of unhinged Porygon a bit. And he certainly does highlight the potency of the M20 anti-tank mine if when well used and well baited. And of course, I'll show you what happens if you're not prepared for it. So, you know, I mean, that's already a good tip, you know. If you are the Americans, do try to get some of those mines down here and there. They can really do a lot to, say, you know, derail an opponent's arm and assault and turn a rush into, well, something quite the opposite. Good use of grenades, so good handing there of the initial rather dirty play there from Porygon. Good use of work there of the units, good pressuring. He saw, you know, managed to take advantage of... Porygon strategy, which was surprisingly heavily reliant on Fultz Grenadiers. I really think that was one of the major issues. They're not really good infantry. And that was basically the problem. He had too many of them and not enough to back them up. I mean, he liked more Orbis of Darden or something else to really get the damage through. That did not quite happen, and rather, in the longer run, gave Tristan the advantage as well. So there were definitely some problems there. And so, anyway, part of me might wonder, was this even the right doctrine to have gone for, since in the end he didn't really amount much for it. He only used two of the abilities. I mean, he might as well, for all intents and purposes, gone for Elite Armoured, which he'd probably could have used just as much. So, I mean, in that regard, you know, that could have just been interesting if he popped out a pair of Panzer Force and caught maybe Tristan a bit off guard. Because, well, you never see those. So, I mean, it's just a bit of a fault there. But anyway, it's interesting fight. Then again, great use of the M20 mine there again. Do try to remember using it. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gave you some ideas for your own matches. If you did, why not subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everybody. If not, you know, send it replay on the front. Some feedback in the comments. That's always appreciated. But do try and be nice. So, anyways, thank you all and see you tomorrow. Bye.